In the Battle for Tobago Gap, the task of the Māori Battalion was to capture Point 209. This feature was held by the 433rd Panzer Grenadiers, and Colonel Charles Bennett decided to attack the feature from the southwest about 3,000 yards away. And he positioned his battalion with two companies forward, A and B companies, with C Company behind them, and to the rear, D Company, who was the battalion reserve. The attack began at 4.15 p.m. on the 26th of March, 1943. When we started, first started, well, tanks first, eh? Big tanks, eh? You look this way, as far as you are, you can see tanks that way. You look that way, to the left and the right, tanks, boom! Oh. forward, attack the hill, eh? And then uh, it was uh, dive bombers, our uh, fighter bombers. They done damage and, uh, of course, the artillery and everything went on. And, of course, they were trying to, you know, to open up where that tank trouble was. We were making for two all night. And, we, and as we got near the base of the hill, we started to go up. But we, we realised that we were on Kurungi and not 209. 209 was behind it. We must realize that this hikura was a, a rocky uh, kind of hill. Uh, there was no green grass or anything like that. And the Germans were using their mortars. And, the, and they had air, air burst, and they burst in midair, and then the shrapnel would come down onto the rock and uh, ricochet in every direction. That's what caused the failure. Wow, we're getting us a bit bloody here, right here, that bug up, shooting the hook and shoot up with it. Too steep. Can't, can't shoot up with it. Ah, well, what is it? Just how did they perp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hide that bloody rock. Oh, bloody rocks, eh? That's where you take two, three steps, you go down four steps. Of the three platoons committed to the attack, it was 14 platoon under Mwana Ngarimu that finally fought its way to the top and began the long night of survival. Now, for a while, you know, the gun I had, you know, petered out, you know, it was too hot, I think. So, yeah, uh, uh, I said, Jesus, Jeff, uh, my, my gun, you see, you see, when that happens, well, you've got nothing to fire against the enemy. Well, you sort of don't feel too well, eh? And he, he said, oh, well, you fellow, your woman uh, don't mind me saying this. He, he said to me, oh, dear, dear, we're, we're pissing it, you know, on the, well, you should ha have oil, you see, for the... And that's what happened, and uh, we left it for a while, and then the old machine gun went off. Then, I'll turn up, look around. Yeah. Put the fire right, right like that. Hold me. Ah, I see one fellow, just come up. Oh, bloody kill that. Well, you go down like that. There's a, uh, a ring you kill it. He come up. It was thrown up like a bag of spot. Down. Next minute I hear that fucking thing coming. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I knew. But let me check it. You can hear the bouncing along. Well, you don't know what where. You can hit you or what. So, just turn my head around and hit a body for it. Then the uh, Germans decided to, they would give us a... Um, Mortar, mortar fire, you know, they would shell us, which they did very effectively. And we got like, we had a lot of casualties there. The mortars were dropping right on top of us, uh, just a few feet from their own men, and we got a lot of casualties just by these mortars. We were down at the bottom of Hikurangi and we looked up and here were the, the Germans absolutely entrenched with machine guns. And what Marty Pro had to do was to scale Hikurangi with all these Germans entrenched above you in slip trenches, sandbags, looking down at you. 
and uh, Warner's 14th platoon, they were up and they engaged the enemy long before. For my uh, platoon, I was on the, on the right because I didn't have any uh, Germans who were sort of opposite me. They were all in front of Warner. Morning only we charged and wiped out two machine gun posts. The Germans counterattacked. Morner ordered his troops to stand fast, take on the enemy man to man. The attackers were mown down. Morner took hits in the shoulder and shrapnel in the leg. He wouldn't leave his men. The counterattacks intensified. Heavy machine gun fire, mortars. Narimu stood his ground. Stones and Tommy gun to drive off the enemy. The line held. Dawn broke. The Germans made the final assault. Morna stood defiantly, Tommy gun at his hip. He took out many. The line was secure. The charge was too much. The day after the battle began, Mona Nadimu was killed on March the 27th, 1943. Rainfall during Maori occasions signifies the blessing of the gods and brings something special to the occasion. Here at Whakarua Park, on the 4th of October 1943, it had been raining throughout the day. Perhaps more significantly, though, was the presence of a rainbow arched perfectly across these grounds, providing a majestic backdrop to the events that were about to unfold here. And the event was the investiture and presentation by the Governor-General, Sir Cyril Newell, of the Victoria Cross, which had been won posthumously by Second Lieutenant Te Monanui Akiwa Narimu. On that particular day, of course, there was the rain and the, um, the mud, which covered the whole of the park area. The rain wouldn't let up, and um, oh, it was just teeming, it was pelting down. So um, Bishop Bennett appealed to the people to uh, to join him in prayer and ask uh, God to have mercy upon us and grant us. Um, fine weather, which took place. And after that, I remember just looking ahead and seeing a blue sky, but clouds were still around, but it fined up for the most part of the day. The audience is prepared. Five and a half hour ceremony is a pattern of dance and song, lament and exultation. To the gathering come the old and the young. The ceremony also honors other individual members of the Maori Battalion as well as Lieutenant Ngarimu. Decorations were presented to Lieutenant Colonels C.M. Bennett, F. Baker, and G.F. Bertman. You know, when I officer, was called out to come w. forward to receive my knees here, well, I had my knees shaking, and, and I reckon if I had them, my knees together, I'd, people would hear nothing. It really was something, well, I think it's hard to, something that, you know, I don't wish to talk about, but because that, uh, the occasion was there for the Ngari Mubisi and me, me taking part in it. Well, for me, it's a great, a memorable, memorable day for me. But to receive from His Excellency the Governor General the Victoria Cross won by their son, come Mr. and Mrs. Hamoera Ngari And as I looked at them, you know, I knew what Mum and Dad and Auntie Matero would have thought that the. Um, 
the Victoria Cross was all right, you know, for valor, and they accepted that. But I think deep down in their hearts, they were really sorry that our brother didn't come back in person. Mrs. Marin and I wish that Mona could be here to see the tribute paid to us and to all the Maori people because of what he did to win the Victoria Cross. He loved this country so well that he was glad to fight for it. The following day, Moana's grandmother, Makare Ngārimu, died. She took it very badly. She shut herself in a room. And she got sick and uh, she had uh, pneumonia. And Moana's mother, Auntie Marae, she came here and she she looked after the Mona's mother put the engagement ring back on her finger and she told Da to take it that it was hers. I think she she died a broken hearted. She was broken hearted. The monthly church service at Whareponga, the place where Tamonanui Akiwa Ngarimu was born. It is here with his family that his memorial is best kept in the hearts of those who were closest to him. For me, the Victoria Cross is a symbol of sacrifice by all who give their lives for their country. It's not an, a symbol of individual bravery. In war, no one person can achieve what is accredited to that person. There are always others beside the individual. <laughs> 